ông quỳnh cho ông chủ nhiệm đại học cao văn to các chấm đại ca để tiếp thị sản ca hay đòi bị ca chuyển từ lục nông chí là mấy văn to từ sự đề thay sẽ đây sản thản bật là bận chọc nơi sẽ sản thản tọp thả bò rồi bọc luôn xong chơi kho bì cá chùm liếc trở chê chuẩn đôi khi nhóm bán chùm liếc chùn ông sau nà ca rùi bọc hơi cá bì bóng mán chân nam môn ní cơ rồi thằng ngày rộng đó ngày đó bằng phí lên mê xa mùi phân bằng buồn rồi chất sắp rắm bởi chia chôn tầng ơ để bán rô nâu nông tì cổng nê nê trâu bán chùm lia chanh bì tì cổng bình mên tại ca chùm lia ní mình mên chìa ca chùm lia đói bằng khóm nụ tì mên hết phòng bì giang để thân nạ đất nóm bán bằng khóm chất khuôn anh vừa xây cái đấy xong rách bệnh này hết phát tí mùi cử đôi xa miên ca phí khai ca tùm liệt cơ rộp bệnh rộp bó xa hạ rất ảm rích một lưu tì cơ rộng cơ rộng rất tha phí ba lôn nô bàn tổ tuôn bà ra chì chúng nói ní vì chưa mùa là hết để ách vơ ôi thân nạ đất nóm Nâng bởi chìa bởi rớt khả mẹ chưa bàn thả Nâng miên dôn hò ám rích Mọc tùm nẹ cổ rộp bạch Nâng bởi chìa cầm bởi chìa chìa thù mây tiết Nâng tam cổ rộng nê nê Chìa bì xe nâng tì cổ rộng nông bình Bởi xa hạ rớt ám rích Thả lọp tùm nẹ cổ rộp bạch Nâng bởi chìa cầm bởi chìa 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 Hết phát tí bì, cư thả, bởi thế Campuchia bán cho lòng cắt sẵn kìm ở rửa dự bê chiêng bà làm cho nằm một hời. Tạm rửa dự sẵn kìm đi, bởi thế Campuchia bán cho bởi thế bà nhà hà bởi chôm cho chân, rùm tiếng sự biến à hà phóng đẻ. Cơ rửa này sự biến à hà, vì chìa bà nhà hà mùi xong khăn, để trâu đo xa lái chia bằng tờn Pro viết tiệm tôn nâng ả dụ chí vết rõ bó bởi chìa chuẩn Nâu bê lũ bởi thế Campuchia có mình miên chùm nuôi bí bó thế đẻ Sự thách nông ca lạ tê xa bằng tờn bài bí Bán kia thân nạ đất nôm rõ bó bạc của mình Campuchia bạn riêng chôm phán ca chùm liếc bởi chìa chuẩn Ôi tư tam tổng bốn Nâng khai ná đầy miên thôn thiên Sẽ cho cách Sẽ râu ổng co Á chùm chùm bởi chìa chuẩn bán Nâng tiêm tiê Ôi bởi chìa chuẩn chô rùm Nông ca bằng co bằng cao anh phó Đôi khuôn ảnh Xâm rắp quốc quân Chi vô phép rô nấu Nâng co sáng bởi chìa chìa Tông nâng ca chùm liếc bởi chìa chôn chanh bì tì krông phân bình Cả nạ ở chân trái bán xâm rách Ôi mà chèm bạc Có bởi chùm đông bây riêng chôm phèn ca chùm liếc Cúp lê khá phùm phía Để chìa xâm mạc chức cả nạ mà chèm bạc Bán chô rùm cách bởi chùm ni Bê nụ nhóm chăm bán thà Cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi và hãy subscribe cho kênh lalaschool Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn Hãy đăng ký kênh để ủng hộ kênh của mình Hãy đăng ký 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 kênh của mình nông cá chui sầm ruột kia tàu vinh tàu máu chạy tuôn nâng cá chìm liền ní nâng trâu nai nhóm đo sạ cỏ ói khách không đo sải chi vào phép 
ประเทศจวนได้บานจมเลี้ยงเจงปีตีกรงถุงปิ้งให้กมอ้อยเมียนกาเรอเอื้อจมพุประเทศจวนตึงนุกผ่องแดตัวเจียมเมียนให้พอจมปีนี้ก็ได้กาจมเลี้ยงประเทศจวนนูเปลุกเทวลังตามกาสมัจจิตได้เมียนกาบังคับบังขอมเมียนปลาอำเภอหังสาหรือสันลับประเทศจวนนุตีประกาศนี้เราบ้านอนุวัตตามระยะกาปัญญาประเทศจวนออยบ้านยลดังจ้าปีสัทธานเพียบกรธนะในกาสำเด็จกรอบใบเราบ่สหรัฐอเมริกหมกลือกีกรงนึ่งตำเร้ากาจำบ้านในกาดอกสายจิวเพียบนึ่งก่อสร้างประเทศได้ครูไอเนเปลุประจีจวนบ้านยลปีสถานเพียบกรธนะนึ่งตำเร้ากาจำบ้านเราบ่ประเทศเจี๊ยบเจี๊ยบปีเสประจีจวนบ้านกอมโตรนึ่งสลังปัจจุบันโดยในหายประจีจวนบ้านจ่าเจงปีตีกรงเจี๊ยบบรรดาบรรดาตามกาอัมเปียวเนี่ยวนึ่งกาปัญญาระบบปะกุมณีกัมพูชีจะตรงนึ่งจมน้อยนี่ขยมส้มบุญพลื้อจมพัวกาจอดประกันระบบสหปริอัญญาโลกลุกใสสหปริอัญญาบ้านจอดประกันจมพัวกาหุ่มปัดตีกรงพนมปิงแดดบรรดาอ้อยเมียนบีบัดเสบียงอาหารนึ่งกาบันเพลาโจลขนมตีกรงตีตั้งเจียมูลฐานบังไอ้หลบบอลหลอนขนมตีกรงถุงปิ้งได้เทอร์ล้างดอยปะกุมนิกัมพูชีถ่านี่เจียอมเปื้ออะมนุษย์สโตร์เจ้าสหปริอัญญาทลอกปานกึ่งเต้ถ่าปูลหลอนลบานบันเพลาดอยกับเพลิงทมได้สหรัฐอเมริกาดอลอ้อยอ๋อรบเลียงกรอบหนึ่งกาตุ่มเด็กกรอบใบปีสมณะสหรัฐอเมริกาเชิญเชียงกันละเลียนเต่าบ่มพลานพิเศษสมบัยวัดอารามตรอบสมบัติสลายจอกกำจอมกาสัตว์ปีหันหน้าระบบปริจิจุนเชี่ยปีใสบรรดาอ้อยสลับมนุษย์รบเสพมือเนี่ยเมียนเตียงจ่าเจริญเตียงปุ่มมาเตียงสตรีเพชรตานี่มันเมนเจียอมเปื้ออะมนุษย์โทษหรือเจียอกระตกรรมเตหรือกรอบใบกรอบสหรัฐอเมริกได้บันทึกปานตำเนาเมาเลือประเทศกัมพูชีเมียนจมนุ่นเจริญเจียงใบดองในกรอบใบได้สหรัฐอเมริกบานตำเนาเลือกประเทศญี่ปุ่นนองสังเกตมโลกเลือกตีปีเลิกไปนี่ปะกมณีกัมพูชีบานจัดตุกประจิจวนได้รอเนื้อขนมตีกรุงทองปิ้งอาตัวเลิกไปนี่ปะกมณีกัมพูชีมินบานจัดตุกประจิจวนได้รอเนื้อขนมตีกรุงทองปิ้งเจี๊ยบหมังโดยกาจอดประกันรบบสหรัฐเรียกไอเนอเตตุยตุวิ่งประจิจวนได้รอเนื้อตีกรุงทองปิ้งตัวนี้เหตุเจริญเจียกรรมก่อกษิกออนุทนปัญญาจวนหนึ่งบุคคลสไนฮาเจียดได้ปะกมณีกัมพูชีเต้าโปรโมลหนึ่งจัดตุกเจียกำลังมุ่ยดอสำคัญดำใบจูรวมฟื้นปัจจุบันจมพัวกรณีได้ลกลกใสสหปริยายาเลิกเลิกอมปีกัมพูชีประเทศจีนประเทศเจริญเทศกาลนี่เวียเจียเรื่องมุ้ยมันอาจจะตัวโยบานตียมโซ่เหมือนเจี๊ยจูนบองโอนจนรวมเจี๊ยถ่าปะกมณีกัมพูชีมันเมนโตสูรวมต่อปฏิกัมพูชีนองโกลบอมน้องด่าปฏิจจวนกัมพูชีจิตเทศกอโดยกาจอดประกันระบบสหฤทธิ์ประฤทธิ์อัญญาตีพี่ตัวเองปะกมณีกัมพูชีบ้านรวมด้วยประชาชนกัมพูชีปีเทศเพียบ
ยืงจังออกนี่กู้แต่บ้านดังรุ่ยมาหายถ่าเนื้อมุนไงรมดอกดอกผมเป็นเมษาชนามุ่ยปนผมบนรอยจะสับรำประเจียกาสิกอกัมพูชีเพียจราลเมียนเพียบไกรกรอควมกควกรอยนึ่งจูบประเจียกาหลุมบ้าอย่างคลั่งเนื้อขนมจีบเพียบรอเนื้อรบปูเกรัฐอำนาจลนนลมินบานตัดดอลเซวาสาเทระนึ่งกุกูปีศกขมาลเพียบสังกุมดอลประจีจนไกรกรอนุตีอมเปอปุรลุยนึ่งเพียบยุติโทบานจะรอย่างเจ้าเนื้อขนมสังกุมกัมพูชีดอยซาฮัดพอนิประจีกะสิกอกันแต่กรอตูกรอตูปวกกระตายใจใจบอลปีในต้นดาวใบตัวตรงจีบเพียบเสียบาจงงื้อหรือบองปวนดาเนื้อเปรนุ่ยหายปวดในตุนบานเฉลี่ยเปรดได้ประจีจนเบียนตุกลมะบานฝืนตุกบกมันนิ่งหนึ่งเตี๊ยกาปรากฏตามตุ่มเนื้อเจ็ดรอโหดดอลโยกาปรากจุ่มนวลห้าสิบเพร้อยขนมมวยไข่ก็เหมือนดอยกาปรากปวดหูหายน้องอ้อยประจีจนตุ่มนุ่เมียนลาตะเพียบซองบมนลหายเท้าปานมาจ้าบมนลรบโอ้ยอดได้ใส่จำกาหนึ่งเตี้ยสมใบอ่อนเนื้อเปลือกอ่อนได้ใส่จำกาหนึ่งเตี้ยสมใบประจีจนตรงนู้เท้าบังคอมจัดสีชนูเกหรือเท้าปานจับบังคอมอ้อยทั่วเจียกย่อมกันเจียเกดำใบกัดบมนลได้ซองมันจะอ่อนนี่เมียนกรณีเจริญได้ปวกก็เตาบังคอมจัดลวกโกนอ้อยทั่วจะขยมเกะต่อโกนต่อเจ้าเรือครวนเหมือนรูดหายคล้ายหายคล้ายเจติสกอร์บอกเกะโดยลวกกำลังโดยบายแต่มวยจมไอ้กับเปียบนองกาเกงประวันนึ่งเทียบไกรกรอรัวตีบังพดเมียนรบบอปริจีกะสกอนี้เกี่ยวบปะเหตุมุ้ยขนมบปะเหตุจะเชิญติดได้ปะกรมนิกรรมปุจิรุมดอกประติจิตหนึ่งประจิจวนเจงปีเจสเพียบกาเกงประวันกาจีจวนหนึ่งกาเลียนเปียนระบบบริเตดอยก่อสร้างประเตกรรมปุจิมุ้ยได้ประจิจวนรัวนู้ดอยสมาเพียบหนึ่งประจิจวนเจียมจ่าประเตปิดประกอบขนมโกลจุมโฮไอเกรียกประจักษ์กาคลุ้นตีปึงคลุ้นให้คลุ้นสมรักเลยโจกเวสนาเจียดคลุ้นดอยคลุ้นไอขมิ้นโกลโยบายหรือแผ่นกาหรอกบอกปะกมณีกัมพูชีนาหมุยได้กมนัดอ้อยดะปรเจียจวนเจียเตสกอตามระยะกาบังอัดอาหากาบังคอมอ้อยถุกาหรือกาสำลับเลยพี่จะวิ่งนึกเบ็ดกันได้ชั่วนำมือเปิ้ลผมบุญรอยเจ็ดสิบมุ้ยกันนะอาจารย์ไทยปะกับมณีกัมพูชีบ้านรีบจอมนึ่งอนุมัติกับโรงแพนกาบุญชั่วนำสำหรับก่อสร้างสังคมในยุ่มกรุ๊ปไหนเมื่อเกี่ยนนึ่งโกนโยบายรบบ้ปะกับมณีกัมพูชีกึ่งเลิกซุยกับรัฐจีวเพียบระบบประจีจนกัมพูชีแผนการนี้บ้านกับนอตหาระบบห้าอาห้าระบบประจีจนมันเนี่ยมันเนี่ยจุ่มนวลดอกใบถังหรือดอกใบร้อยดอกปีกิโลกรัมเสาขนมมือฉน้ำโดยฉะนั้นประจีจนหกกรุ๊ปกรันสำหรับปีใบเปลือกเจ้าบุญเปลือกขนมมือไงจุ่มปุ่มมาหกคือปีมุกเมียนสันรอซึกหนึ่งสันรอโกเลิกปีนี้บ้านสำไรบันเทิมเลิกระบอบหาอาหารนู่นจมนี่หนึ่งบังเอ็มเสียงเสียงได้ปัดอ้อยใบทั้งไงมาดองขนมชั้นน้ำมือปนผมบุญร้อยเจ็ดสิบปีปีทั้งไงมาดองมาดองขนมชั้นน้ำมือปนผมบุญร้อยเจ็ดสิบปีให้มวยทั้งไงมาดองจับปีชั้นน้ำมือปนผมบุญร้อยเจ็ดสิบปีต่อเติม
จมปุกกาเงี้ยวิ่งกู้อ้อยประจิจวนทวกาผมใบมังขนมุ้ยไงหนึ่งอ้อยชกสำระใบไงขนมุ้ยแขกเนรีเมียนตีปุ้หนึ่งลองจันเลอ้อยชกสำระปีแขกเนี่ยจมงื้ออ้อยชกสำระตามเจ็ดใดเลิกทีนี้ยืงบ้านเรียบจอมบำเกิลเครื่องจักอ้อยกันแต่เจริญสำรับสำราญสมงวนกาเงี้ยโดยกำลังกายเพื่อระบบปฏิจจุนี่บางหายถาโกลมันนอกบังโกลจมห่อระบบปะกมนิกรรมปฏิจจ์มันบานบังคอมอ้อยปฏิจจ์จนทวีกาย่างทงนทงโง่ดูเลยขยมเนื้อจำบานถาเมียนทั้งไงมุ้ยขยมบานทวีอมหนาจุกันไข่สีเปลี่ยบกัดตามไข่กับปงถมเนื้อเปลี่ยบขยมบ้านเคยประจิจวนได้ถูกการเวียนใส่เป็นขยมสู้กรรมาพิบาลกรอบกรองบูรธานุเกิดฉลาดปรับขยมทาประจิจวนเมียนสมาได้ปัญญาจัดขั้วสมะสมะจัดฝึกการบันเทิงกล้อยชนะมวยปนผมบุญโรยจัดสมบูรณ์เติบขยมดังจับาทากรรมาพิบาลบูรธานุบ้านก่อเหาะขยมเลิกปีนี้ยื่นบานโครงการจำนายสำหรับนำเป็ดระยะเป็ดบุญนำสรุปสามสิบปรำเลียนปีแสนปรำปีหมื่นดอลลาร์สำหรับสำเลียบมเปี้ยระยะเป็ดบุญนำสรุปหกสิบปรำมวยเลียนปีแสนปรำปีหมื่นดอลลาร์สำหรับเทศสมัยอาณาไม้วัปปะโถระยะเป็ดบุญนำสรุปแปดสิบเหรียญปีแสนหนึ่งใบเมื่อดอลลาร์ปะกรมนิกรรมปุจิบานได้ใจนูพันการนี้อย่างเจริญหนึ่งจะบ้าเลยสำหรับอ้อยภูมิเพียหนึ่งตำบอนสวายยอดนิมุยนิมุยอนุวัตจมปุ๊กกากับสำหรับปุจิจุนก็มันเมนเจียพันกาหรือโกลนโยบายหรือว่าปะกรมนิกรรมปุจิได้ปะกรมนิกรรมปุจิเมียนพันกาบังเกิลจุมนุนปริจิจุนมันเมียนกัดจุมบันทอยจุมนุนปริจิจุนเลยปนแต่กู้ออยสอกสลายได้ผู้ไม่เพียรนึ่งตำบอนสวายยอดคลาเมียนบ้านอนุวัตตามกาสำรักจิตบอกกันนะอาจารย์ไตรมอกดอลเปนนี่ขยมอายสรบนึ่งชลายตอบนึ่งจุมนอลรบตุลากาหนึ่งเจี๊ยบปีเซจนรวมเจี๊ยบบอกหยมอ้อยบ้านเจี๊ยบถ่าวินเนสกัมได้เกิดแรงนองระบบกัมพูชีไปเจี๊ยบตะปัยโดยสาบูลหายโดยขางกรอมตีมวยเนี่ยดักน้อมระบบปะกมลิกัมพูชีเจริญเริญกัมมาพิบาลมวยจมดุนเข้าดอยเนี่ยคลาสบอดเนี่ยครับกระดับมันบานปีเมียเกียรบอกปะเฮ้ยเนี่ยดักน้อมระวลแต่กักาเนตีกรงพลุ่มปิงมันเศร้าบานจอกตามสหกอ้อยบานจอบหลอกตีปีเมียนเมยดักน้อมภูมิเพียดอมบอนสวายหยดหนึ่งกำมาพิบาลมวยจุ่มนุนเจี๊ยบเนี่ยเงียบบังก้มระบอกเวียดนามหนึ่งอเมริกได้กบัดปัดวัดปุ๊กเก๋บานทเวสกัมบเพียบำเพ็ญบำเพลานเจรณาปะกรมนิกรรมปุจีประจีจนกรรมปุจีหนึ่งประเทศกรรมปุจีปุ๊กเก้มันบานทเวตามแผ่นกาหนึ่งโกลนโยบายรบบปะกรมนิกรรมปุจีเต้ใบจะนำขี้กับสำหรับหนึ่งทเวบาปจีจนโดยกาบังอัดอาฮากาบังคอมอ้อยทเวกาหัวกำลังตามตำเนื้อจัดบอกลุ้นหายเละบังหนึ่งเรกาพูดกับเขามอกมาเฉลี่ยปะปู่เก๋ทวีกรุ๊ปวิธีเดิมใบอ้อยประจีจุนเมียนสเตอารอมทนังทนะเงี่ยมอกปะทังปฏิวัติบรรดาอ้อยปะกุมนิกัมปุจีจอกสาวหายสเตอร์บอร์เต้โยเลสท้ามอกรมดอกประจีจุนกัมปุจีเดิมใบอ้อยกาเฉลี่ยเปียนบอกเก๋คล้ายเจียอมปื้อสลดฉบับเจ้าสไลเมย์ภูมิเพียโบปีบ้านบังอัดใบปีจีจนแต่ใบจีลุยดักเซลเ
chân tấu bản tế Việt Nam tự bình Cô ní ai túc chắc túc thả Chịu bụa đốt ở khói rồi ở chào Bụa đốt ở khói cứ bụa thua ở lớp của hai Bị cô này vô bái rồi bóp bác cũng ní cầm phía chìa Bụa rồi chào ở chào cứ bụa kế mình thua bây giờ Mình khó là bây giờ Hãy cầm mà thì bà thân ác rõ với tám ổng phương chất Tuy bầy Mình cầm mà thì bà thương phí thiện Tâm bón xoay giác Sẽ rộng Nâng xã có Mùi chùm luôn thông Các đạp Mình bán Bị mẹ kia Phen cá Nâng cô là dấu bái Rõ bó bạ của mình đi cầm phí chìa Cô lông đi Mình bán là rê ca Bị ca lũng bạ Nâng ca khoa khát Rõ bó bạ chì chuẩn Rư bó bán chì rê ca vinh ពីភាពជោគជ័យក្នុងការដឹកនាំមូលដ្ឋានរបស់ខ្លួនមកមួយចាំបាក់ជាធ្នោនិងស្នាដៃដើម្បីឲ្យបានសម្រេចដូចរ
องกาสัวสะใสเงาจมพัวมุกตุลากากาสัวสะใสเจ็บในมวยรอสำคัญสำหรับสวายโรคกาปิดหนึ่งเพียบมินจปะเลาะรบสะใสไปไปเลยลาสพอลนิสะใครกันนี่เจ้ากรอมไอสำรัจใส่กระไดประกอบด้อยยุติถั่วจมพัวสาวกาเนี่สาวนากาเนี่ขยมมือคืนหาเจ้ากรมมันบ้านปิจารณาอ่อยบ้านเด็ดดออมปีปัญหาในเตเงาเปลประเรียอัญญาสูสาสัยเจ้ากรมแตงแต่ปลอดออกกะอ่อยประเรียอัญญาสูรหูกำรอหนึ่งเมียนกาลุมคานนะบ่ตัวเมียนกาจมเตอปีเมทวีกาเปียกระดอยจำนายเมทวีกาเปียวิ่งมันเมียนออกกะโดยในเตเมตวีกาเปียเตาปานรุมคานกรุบเปรวิเลียตามกาจมโตดอกบัวเสียหะริปริอัญญาให้เจ้ากรมตามแตงแต่ปลอ้อยปริอัญญาเพื่อแบบนี้เมียนเปรคลาเนื้อเปรเมตวีกาเปียเพื่อกาต่อว้าก็เมียนกาปรเมียนปีปรเทียนสาวนากาจะเดิมโดยเมื่อเคยเพียบอายุตัวแบบนี้ยังรูปขยมก็โดยจิโลคิวสมพรบ้านสำรัจจัดชบดอลสะไข่กำจูนตลาการปีโปรยเยื่อโยธาบ้าตัวจิเยื่อปลอดจมลอยจูนเจ้ากรอมก็เวียมินเมียนนี่เอาไว้ได้ได้หายถาเจ้ากรอมเมียนเพียบดมเอี้ยงหายเอาไว้ได้อนุวัตนู่จมพัวมุกตลาการนุเวียกรันแต่เจี๊ยกาบังกรุบเนตเตวิธีหรือบังปิงตุมร้องเอาดอกมือแต่ปนองสรุปสุดเลยหมอกดอกไอเลือมูลฐานดึงใบได้ขยมบ้านบรรจิจูนคางเลยนี่เวียบ้านชลบรรจังอย่างชมาธาขยมมันบ้านเพื่อแผ่นกาปลอบปลิดบ่อละเมอขยมมันบ้านช่วยอุปถัมหรือเลิกตึกเจ็ดเอาจวนนาเหมือนเนี่ยปลอบปลิดบ่อละเมอบ่ตัวเจียขยมเมียนตัวในตีเจียอนุเลขาปะกมณิกัมพูชีหนึ่งเจียประเทศสเพียดอำนาจประจีจนกัมพูชีขยมมันบ้านดังอมปีกาปลอบปลิดบอลเมอร์เนื้อตามมูลฐานุเตเตอแต่เนื้อจิตจงบรรจบในระบบกัมพูชีประจีตะไคร้เตอร์ขยมบ้านดังอมปีอมเปอร์กบัดระบบเมตตนอมเนื้อตามภูมิเพียสมบัติหนึ่งมูลฐานคละได้เมียนบำนองบำพลานจลนาปะกมณีกัมพูชีหายสูบเปนุขยมปิดเจ้าเมียนอมนายน้องกาตุบสกัดอำเภอกมัดตึงลูกบาลเลยปีโปรขยมปุ่มเมียนตัวเนตีกรอบกรองพิจารเลือกกองกองกำลังอยู่เทียหรือรัฐอำนาจมูลฐานตลอดสัปดาห์เซนบาร์ขนองกระบอบกัมพูชีปิดเจ้าที่ประเทศขยมปิดจิมเมียนอำนาจดักน้อมหรือบ้านประพฤติบดหลุมเมื่อโดยการจอดประกันในปีนี้ประกอบเชียตุลาคาได้ปังกาลังดอยระบอบซาเทรนารัตปจีมนิกกัมพูชีขนงชนะมวยปอนปมบุญโดยเจสพรัมปิดเชียกัตโตขยมโดยปนปอนหนึ่งอิงสรีต่อเฮยปีโปรเปลุกกือพาตางในอกาสกรรมนู่นปนซอตุกทำไมทำไมหนูเลยมันบัดรวงจำเปิดสามสับปรำไปชั่งน้ำดอกใบกัดตัวขยมตีแต่ดอยสาดังทักขยมขมิ้นอมนายไว้นึ่งมันบานเปิดเปิดตัวใบจียังนะขยมนึ่งจะสมได้หนึ่งกาสาวสลายจะตีบังพดนึ่งสมตัวตัวเข้าเต้าพนายเสรถจมปุ๊บจนรวงครูจังอ้อหนึ่งประจีจนกัมพูชีจังมูลได้บ้านตะตัวกรวงครูนองระบบกัมพูชีประจีตะปะตายเจี๊ยกาปิดสำรับประวัติศาสตร์เตียงโกลยบายเตียงเมียกีหนึ่งเตียงไพนการะบบจลนาปะกัมนิกัมพูชีบ้านบังการเล่งนองโกลบังน้องแต่มวยก้นกือรุมดอกประจีจีหนึ่งประจีจวนเอาอยู่รุ่ยพอดปีอาณาในกลุ่มในยุ่มจะกระเป๋าในยุ่มหนึ่งกาจีจวนเก่งประวัติเพียบไกลกรอโรตีปมพอดขมิ้น
กาจีเจเรนึงกาเฉลียนเปียนปีประเทศจีนขางปีเซปีประเทศเวียดนามปะกรมนิกัมพูชีเมียนโกลยุบายเจเรเมียนกาพูดพ่อคือก่อสร้างประเทศมุ่ยสมาเพียบเหนือนึงประเทศจนเจียมจ้าประเทศปิดประกอบขนมโกลจมโฮไอกรีประจ้ากาคลุ้นตีปุ่งคลุ้นหายคลุ้นสมรจเลยโจกเวสนาเจียดครูนดอยครูนไอเจรณาปะกรมนิกัมพูชีบังการแล้วมันเม่นดำใบกับสำลับประเทศจนนึ่งบังพลายประเทศเจียดเลยขยมปิดจมเบียนกาสาวสายจมปัวกาเลียบังสังแต่มวยจีวิจบอกขยมขนมปะกรมนิกัมพูชีมันน่าเสกการะระบอกขยมเสกได้สังคมระบอกขยมนึ่งเสกได้สปรัชนาระบอกขยมเราบานบำเพ็ญร้อยปู่กบฏจรณะได้เทอ้อยปริเจจนระบอกหยมเราบานกับสำลับหนึ่งรวมทุกเวทนาปริเจจีระบอกหยมเราใบบะตัวใบเจี๊ยสอบวิญญาณสกามขนมระบอบกัมพูชีปริเจจปฏัยบังกอลังร้อยจนกบฏจรณะก็ได้กอขนมเนียมหยมเจียอนุเดคาปะกุมณีกัมพูชีได้เมียนเพรกิจโฆษณาอบรมปีโกลยุบายระบอบปะกรมนิกัมพูชีขยมสมสมโตเจียสาเทระนาจมพัวจนรวงกรุกรมครัวสาจนรวงกรุหนึ่งประเทศจนกัมพูชีตะมูลหายขยมนู้แต่ประกันจมหัวจะตู้เข้าเต้าเลิบในสันทอจมพัวกากรุบกรงมันบานดัดดอหนึ่งมันบานกรุบจุงจุ้ยเราบอกปะกรมนิกัมพูชียมโสมกรุบวิญญาณขันดอลปฏิจจนได้รวมกรุบดอลกรุบยะทาให้ตึงอ้อขนมเราบอกกัมพูชีปฏิจจตุปตัยสรุปไอ้ใครตามเป็นลื่นในสาวนาการนี้ขยมคืนจะมาทายุติโทอาจแปรปรุลตัวตามกาลติสะแต่สัจจะโทเจียอะมตะโทมันแปรปรูจะได้ขาดปปกเมามันอาจบัดบังประตูเป็นลื้อประอติบานเตอย่างนามิงมนุษย์อากาเตอสโลโทมันอาจพูดพอกับหอหนึ่งบัดบังพเนบทประจีจวนหนึ่งมหาจวนมันอ้อยเมื่อเคยนุสัจจะโทในกาโตสู้ดอกอังอายคลาหันรบบประจีจวนกัมพูชีหนึ่งกาอุปธรรมกัมตรโรบบริจิจนสนาหาสัตเพียบหนึ่งยุติโทหรือสกโลกบาลเลยอาศัยให้นี้ดอยไปเลือกพอตามหนึ่งให้พอตึงออกทางเรื่องนี้หนึ่งเจียบปิเศษใส่กระดิ่งสันนิษฐานระบบเมตวีขยมขยมสมดุลโปตุลาการเมตตาสมรัยหอยขยมบานรวยพอดปีบดจอดประกันขนมสมนมเรื่องนี้หนึ่งสมดอเลงขยมอ้อยเมียนเสรีเพียวิ้งตรงตามพระจุมาบสมอกุลสมอกสมอกุลลงเทียนบ่าอาอกกุลให้อันแรกที่คงแข้งนั้นนอมกอดเตอร์อังกุยนือวิกรอยเมตตาวิบากรเชื่อประตูตอนนี้อ่อนแม่ประตูพิจารณาจุนตือมีตัวีการเปิดกระไดลงนุนชี้ดำใบเมียนอกกะนกกาเพื่อได้สันทานและตอบสถาปโปจงกรอยเมตตาวิกุปเปสมครุบลูกุเทียนลูกเซชาวครอมเมตตาวิกาพิกเดย
Nevertheless, Mr. President, I will be. I will try to be as brief as possible and try to respond directly to the arguments of the prosecution and civil parties. And in general, I would like to address the arguments advanced by each counsel. And although I made a necessity to move around because of the overlapping between various councils' arguments, Mr. President, Your Honours, let me begin by addressing the comments advanced yesterday by the Senate parties. The first observation I will make concerns the civil parties' parroting of the OCD's phrase, slave state. We have heard this catchphrase now many times. Like an advertising campaign, the civil parties and the prosecution have not faced a neon sign, all in an attempt to argue that it epitomized the common purpose of the CPK. As we have expressed in both our and in oral arguments, the use of this slogan, the slogan of slave state, is not correct. And is in fact misleading. Not just because of its inaccuracy in describing the workings of the CPK, but also because it is based on evidence that is not yet issued before this chamber. What do I mean when I say that this is not at issue? Before this chamber. I mean that it is grounded in witness statements and evidence that are outside the scope of case 001. Mr. President, this trial, as we are all well aware, concerns two population movements and the alleged two-point crime sites. Cooperatives and their corresponding conditions are uh, not a part of this trial. Despite this, uh, the prosecution and civil parties have tried to backdoor witness statements uh, recounting the operative conditions to show certain individuals were treated like slaves. Having failed to use this phrase in the closing briefs, the civil parties following the prosecution almost blindly now do the same. Mr. President, Your Honours, it cannot be stated more explicitly. All of the witness statements alleging individuals and cooperatives were subjected to slave-like conditions are outside, outside the scope of case 002 01. We have not been able to examine them or test their relevance or liability. Civil parties in the prosecution have made no effort to show whether these statements based entirely on witness observations of conditions on the ground are in any way remotely representative of the country as a whole. By using the slave state slogan, the prosecution and civil parties have tried to have their proverbial cake and eat it too. They have conjured a sensational evocative tagline to advance their allegations, all the while keeping the evidence underlying it safe from scrutiny. As it is based on evidence that is not part of this trial, its relevance ends. ตำรวจบางทีท่านลงลงนุ่นเจี๊ยเมียนปัญหาไอ้ตำรวจลงนุ่นเจี๊ยอ๋อตำรวจมาลงนุ่นเจี๊ยจังตลับตะเกล้า
นอมครูนลุนุนเชียตลอดตัวการบรรทุกคงครูนได้ในปีกรอมซาสำนักการเจ้าเจ้าอีลูกมีจะมีโกเป้บรรทออในสำนักฐานบักครูนขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานสมาคมลูกประธานโดยในชั้นบ้านเป็นเช่นเดียวกันกับการปราบเปียธาโรเจสันสหภาพยานนำเราไปนี่คือชี้ยิ้มท่าจังปราบเปียนี่หายหนึ่งยุลีนี่เอาไว้ในเกลือกลางเนื้อท่าชิคาอันเดอร์เบย์ทูไม่เอาไปทุ่มทุ่มไม่ท่า As it is based on evidence that is not part of this trial, its relevance and substance remain untested by the defense. Indeed, the defense itself requested this evidence be included in this trial. They request that the prosecution object to underscoring their fear that they did not want to risk exposing these allegations to the light of day. And Mr. President, the civil parties have applied this. Tactic in other ways. We can see it, for instance, in their claim that two million deaths occurred during the Democratic Republic. This allegation of two million deaths is again based on untested evidence. Why? Because the report it is based on is not part of this trial. It has not been examined by the parties. The demographer who created it has not been called here in this courtroom as an expert witness. Why? Again, Mr. President, the answer is simple. Because the total number of deaths alleged during Democratic Cambodia is not a part of this trial. Could it be that both the civil parties and the prosecution are suffering from acute amnesia? Have they somewhat conveniently forgotten that this case only concerns two population movements and two portraits? While I could sympathize with the symptoms of a failing memory, even this explanation seems too generous. Whatever. Their excuse may be, Mr. President. The trial chairman cannot condone this mode of proceeding. Allowing the prosecution and the civil parties to base claim claims on untested evidence outside the scope of this trial violates basic principles of the right to a fair trial. And the chairman must accordingly give such assertions no weight whatsoever. The, what I would like to call sensationalizing of witness statements has not been limited to outside the scope of trial. Evidence within the scope of case 002-01 has been treated by the civil parties and the prosecution in the same manner. Examples of this are seen in the civil parties' use of allegations that Khmer Rouge Khadri Killed babies and people with glasses. These witness allegations cannot be used as the poster children for democratic Cambodia. The reality is that these claims are unrepresentative of the experiences of individuals during democratic Cambodia. Their misuse in describing the policy of the Khmer Rouge is therefore disingenuous and it must be disregarded. I almost, I would like to pause for a moment and reflect on the allegation made by the civil parties yesterday morning that in defending our client, we have somehow made a mockery of the civil parties. This is unwarranted. The defense has never denied the suffering of the civil parties. We have never called them liars. In fact, we offer the utmost sympathy to their suffering. We have, as we are tasked with doing as defense attorneys, 
They point to our use of language to further this argument, labeling such words as evacuation and liberation as prime examples of what they call uh, uh, Orwellian newspeak. To this, Your Honours, we simply remind that parties that these terms are used uh, continually by all parties throughout the course of this trial. These terms, Mr. President, are taken straight from the closing order itself. And we can only speculate that if the lawyer for the civil parties had perhaps read the closing order with more care, um, such terms and as evacuation or liberation may not have come as a surprise. In contrast, while well, the civil parties coined phrases like after liberation, straight to the killing fields, we have remained measured in our use of language. Finally, Mr. President, it is with irony that the defense addresses the final claim of the civil parties that the defense is guilty of misrepresenting the evidence to suit our own narrative. Specifically, the civil parties attack our use of witness lay Burmese testimony that the physical conditions of evacuees during the second population movement was both good and normal. The civil parties proclaim that, and I quote, if the defense had read but four lines more, unquote, of Labonese testimony, it would have been apparent that Labonese also testified that the evacuees had swollen bodies and that they received less food than pigs. Mr. President, Your Honor, the defense did in fact read those additional lines of testimony and noted that those lines did not address the second population movement, but instead referenced conditions after resettlement in cooperatives. To the conditions in the new cooperatives, Leiboni observed, and I quote, that however when time passed by, we did not have enough food to eat. We ate the food that was very little. We ate food that made us become, you know, our body parts become swollen. And we believed at that time, we know that the pigs were even given more food than they gave to human beings. And it's what? Your Honours, I now turn to the co-prosecutor's submissions concerning our arguments about the fairness of this trial. The co-prosecutors, in an attempt to gloss over these violations, advance the argument that in allowing the defence their two allocated days of oral argument, the Chamber somehow showed its commitment to the fair trial rights of our clients. The co-prosecutors seem to suggest that in granting us this time, all the fair trial violations have been absolved. To this statement, we can only ask, is the standard that low? And it seems, Your Honours, that the answer to that question is yes. As the Chamber knows, the most important of these fair trial violations concerns witness Heng Samrin, the witness at the heart of a fair trial argument, whose presence at this trial we called earlier a non-negotiable bare minimum for securing a fair proceeding. 
Hang Sumrin, who is a witness of paramount importance to the charges at issue at this trial, the evacuation of Phnom Penh, the events at Tupo Train, and the alleged policy to kill former law law soldiers and officials. Heng Samrin, a witness in possession of important exculpatory evidence that directly exonerates our client from the allegation that he had intended the killing of former law law soldier and officials. Heng Samrin, the one and only character witness requested by Nguyen Chia. Dai Luk Nguyen Chia, Ban Sna Som, Nam Bai Bin Chia, Biat Da Chia Rak Rabok Khor. Your Honours, everyone in and around this courtroom must ask themselves this question. What have you heard from the co-prosecutors and the civil parties in reference to the failure of the chamber to summons Heng Samrin? Nothing. Absolute silence. The co-prosecutors and the civil parties have not responded to the substance of our complaint at all. And there are numerous arguments the parties could have made regarding our request to call Heng Samrin during this trial. But nothing has been said. For instance, they could have argued that the evidence Heng Samrin had to offer was not important, or that it was evidence that could have been established by different witnesses. They could have argued that evidence of Nguyen Chia's character was not relevant, or argued that there were other higher-ranking military witnesses that could have been heard. They could have attempted to argue that there was already sufficient evidence of Nguyen Chia's intent and that Heng Samrin's testimony was therefore not needed. But did they make any of these claims? No, they did not. Mr. President, Your Honours, Heng Samrin is the elephant in the room that the co-prosecutors and the civil parties dare not speak of. Why is it that they are rendered mute by this man? Why not talk about it like Craig Edgerson did this morning in the Phnom Penh? We can think of two reasons only. They either agree that his presence is of paramount importance and a fair trial cannot be had without his testimony, or they are simply not allowed to even mention his name. Either one, Your Honour, would be a remarkable position about these proceedings. If the answer is that the parties cannot even discuss the nature and degree of this fair trial violation and the extent to which the co-prosecutors remain in the government's clutches is even worse than we thought. If the answer is that a fair trial is impossible without this presence, then we have confirmation from all parties that our client's fair trial rights have been irreparably harmed. The International Co-Prosecutor Mr. Kumijan also addressed our argument that this trial is fundamentally political. We heard him say yesterday that he denies that claim. He says that this trial is not about politics but about law. Mr. President, we disagree. We have submitted that a proceeding such as this could never separate law from politics. That a tribunal such as this infuses law with politics. And let it be clear, this view is not constructed from thin air. It is not woven in the minds of a paranoid defenseman. It is a viewpoint with a long pedigree in the history of international criminal proceedings. The Indian judge, Justice Paul, gave serious consideration in his dissenting opinion at the Tokyo Tribunal to the question of whether victors of a war can fairly judge its losers. 
ពន្តែសួរថាតើ uh, Does anyone doubt that the intent, intent of the CPK's alleged policies against enemies um, changes radically in light of the ruthlessness of the enemy who was actually fighting? Nor are more powerful actors equally responsible for, con for conduct identical to that for which our clients since charged accused of identical crimes. Due to co-prosecutors, they are accused the people who run this country, the people responsible for implementing our clients' policies. Mr. President, Your Honor, the answer to this question is, of course, no. The answer is that the prosecutors who claim this trial has nothing to do with politics. They cannot even bring themselves to say in someone's name. They cannot even bring themselves to contest the defense claim that the trial and the investigation were unfair. Let me now, Mr. President, turn to the crimes which were discussed jointly by Mr. Rayner and Mr. Lysak. And I will begin with the evacuation of Phnom Penh. With regard to the evacuation of Phnom Penh, Penh, I would simply Chong, uh, like to clarify a serious misunderstanding of our oral argument uh, which became apparent uh, yesterday and which may have caused some confusion during, during our client's speech here this morning. As our brief explains, uh, and our client repeated again here in this morning, the evacuation of Phnom Penh was driven by a variety of considerations. These included the food supply within Phnom Penh and Cambodia more generally, the effects of the U.S. bombing and the state of Cambodia's economic infrastructure, including its rice studies as of 17 April 1975. Our submissions before the investigating judges in this chamber consistently emphasize all of these factors as integral to the decision to evacuate and the manner in which the manner in which it was carried out. Yesterday, the co-prosecutors seized on a single sentence in my Cambodian colleague's remarks from last week to the effect that the evacuation would still have been carried out had the food crisis in Phnom Penh not existed. Prosecutors argued that this sentence amounts to a concession that neither the American bombing nor the food supply were relevant to the forced transfer charges. And Mr. President, that of course was a misstatement of our position and the reality. Those facts are critically, critically relevant now as they have always been to Nunchia's defense. First, as Sonarun explained, the bombing devastated Cambodia's economic infrastructure and its ability to produce food. That reality was a fundamental aspect of the CBK's conclusion that the economy could not support unproductive cities in a society 
in which economic production was driven entirely by the rice fields. Second, as Sun Run also explained, the evacuation would have looked very different had an impending catastrophe of starvation not existed. During yesterday's hearing, as they have throughout this trial, the co-prosecutors repeatedly attacked the evacuation not for the fact that it happened, but for the way it happened, including its immediacy and the fact that it affected all of the residents of Tong Chen. But those are precisely the features of the evacuation which were driven by the threat of imminent starvation, including the fact that six days' worth of food remained in the city on 17 April 1975. So, Mr. President, the arguments that you heard yesterday, which implied that we had somehow abandoned the food supply and U.S. bombing arguments, were misguided. My final remark about the evacuation of Phnom Penh is that both the civil parties and the co-prosecutors again make the claim that Nguyen Chia did not subject himself to cross-examination. Nguyen Chia subjected himself to 12 days of cross-examination, some of which was described by Mr. Lysak yesterday. And he refused to continue only because of the violations of his right to challenge the evidence against him during the appearance of Mr. Steve Hedder. So, Mr. President, Your Honours, hopefully we can put to rest this myth that our client refused to testify about the evacuation. I would like to turn now to certain comments made by the co-prosecutors concerning the second population movement. While addressing the second population movement, the co-prosecutors misconstrued our argument, claiming that we had said that the second transfer was implemented by rogue zonal leaders, that the second transfer was in fact a rogue operation. We have never said it was wrong. This portrayal of the second movement is their formulation, and it is nonsense. Mr. President, our point was, and still is, that the second movement was the prerogative of the zones. That both Ross Nim and Sao Pim, leaders of the two zones allegedly instrumental in the second population movement, were not mere zone leaders, but powerful members of the standing committee. As a matter of fact, founding members of the CPK, and at least equally as powerful as Nguyen and Paul And that the evidence before this chamber supports the conclusion that it was the zones that had primary control and authority over the second uh, population movement. Next, Mr. President, I will turn to Tool Portray. We have many things to say about Tool Portray and its underlying policy, but because of the time, I will limit myself to six key points. First, the co-prosecutors yesterday simply say nothing about any of the direct evidence that no policy of executing normal soldiers and officials exists. They say nothing about Pi Pong. They say nothing about Heng Sam Rin. They say nothing about, about Uk Bun Chung. They do not challenge it. They do not contest it. They do not tell that the chamber that it is uh, unreliable. They also do not tell the chamber how to resolve the direct contradiction between their position and this clear evidence from well-placed CPK insiders. As I have already observed, we claim that there was a violation of our client's right to a fair trial so serious that it required dismissal of all charges concerning And again, the co-prosecutors did not even mention it. 
Second, Mr. President, the co-prosecutors offered this chamber two pieces of evidence that a policy to execute law no soldiers and officials existed. And the first piece of evidence was a photo of a group of people at the Ministry of Information, supposedly on 17 April 1975. Now, Mr. President, Your Honours, I would like to show that photo uh, on the screen. And with your uh, permission, Mr. President, I would like to do that now. Uh, and maybe uh, to the AV unit we could show it a few times in a row, because it's part of a little video. To round up and oh, execute all those who were linked to the Lon Nol establishment. Moments after this photograph is taken, this troop of MPs and bureaucrats are led to a nearby tennis court and massacre. To round up and execute all those who were linked to the Lon Nol establishment. Moments after Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. President. The co-prosecutors so called this photo of some people calmly standing around with their arms folded, and I quote, very strong evidence that every soldier and every official of the Khmer Republic who was killed uh, in all of Cambodia on or around 17 April 1975 was in fact killed pursuant to a CPK policy. This photo, Mr. President, was one of the two pieces of evidence that the co-prosecutors claim conclusively proves the existence of that policy. Now maybe the co-prosecutors see a secret code in this photo that, that we do not. And contrary to the co-prosecutors' claims, we responded to this evidence directly in our oral argument last week. We conceded that the people depicted in this photo were present at the Ministry of Information, which is all all that this photo shows. We explained why that fact is irrelevant to any supposed execution policy. Co-prosecutors chose not to respond to those arguments. Instead, they just reiterate the fact that these people were present at the Ministry of Information. And this supposedly very strong evidence, Mr. President, is irrelevant. The second piece of supposedly conclusive evidence was a series of quotations from Duik. As we have argued before, Duik has admitted to having had no basis to make any conclusions with regard to CPK policy. His testimony is irrelevant. However, I will add that even the irrelevant excerpts cited by the co-prosecutors yesterday established that no execution policy existed. Yesterday, the prosecution quoted Duik saying, and I quote, during that initial stage, people were evacuated and then some of the senior soldiers were arrested and secretly killed. End of quote. We do not know how Duik came to this conclusion, but even this evidence suggests that only senior soldiers were apparently executed, and even then that only some of those senior soldiers were executed. And the co-prosecutor's other evidence from Duik was just as inconsistent with this supposed policy. As the prosecution noted, Judge Leverne asked Duik in case 001 whether people linked to the Long Nol regime were executed. Now Duke answered, Duke, Duke's answer was as follows, and I quote, People in Long Nol's regime were classified into three categories. First category referred to the people who were smashed secretly, end of quote. 
Now this is the point where the co-prosecutors stop reading. But as your chairman is well aware, the excerpt continues. And I quote, the second category referred to the people who were detained in the re-education camp. And the third category referred to the people who were regarded as the new people. End of quote. So this is the co-prosecutor's final concluding evidence of a policy of systematically hunting down and executing all lone soldiers and officials. It proves that no such policy existed. Mr. President, my third of the six points about to portray concerns pattern evidence. Yesterday, the co-prosecutors did not even attempt to contest our systematic demonstration that no such pattern existed. Mr. Rayner spoke very theatrically about the systematic nature of the pattern. You might remember he asked the chamber five or six times whether it was a coincidence, a coincidence that killings occurred in exactly the same way across, across the country. And our question is this, Mr. President, is it a coincidence that the co-prosecutors failed to identify one single witness proving the existence of this pattern, which they say happened everywhere? Is it a coincidence that they failed to respond to a single one of the numerous concrete arguments we presented to the Chamber in our closing submissions? Mr. Lysak also commented on the supposed pattern evidence. He told the chamber that the defense has, and I quote, a thesis, unquote, about the supposed ex execution of Lono soldiers in April 1975. He said our thesis was that executions happened in the southwest and northwest zone, but not elsewhere. In reality, Mr. President, we have no, quote, unquote, thesis about the execution of Lono soldiers. Our only thesis is that the co-prosecutors have failed manifestly and completely to establish the existence of a centrally directed policy. The reasons for that conclusion are firstly that it is inconsistent with the direct evidence, Secondly, that the so-called pattern evidence is systematically unreliable. And third, that the systematically unreliable evidence is geographically concentrated in the southwest and northwest zone and is therefore irrelevant to statewide policy. The prosecution contests none of these facts. In order to establish the existence of a policy based on unreliable evidence, not tested in open court, which is concentrated in only a small part of the country, the prosecution should be ready before this chamber with quite an extraordinary explanation. Now, Mr. Lysak proposed a possible explanation. He suggested that maybe there were more Lono soldiers in the northwest and southwest zone than elsewhere in the country. Yet at the same time, he does not offer the chamber even a shred of evidence in support of this proposition. The evidence we showed the chamber last week demonstrated overwhelmingly that Lono soldiers were not executed in liberated zones prior to 1975. There is no reason to believe that Lono soldiers did not continue living in those zones until and after April 1975. Nor does the evidence merely show that fewer Lono soldiers and officials were killed in the special central North, the Eastern, and the Northeastern zones in April 1975. It shows they were not killed in those zones at all. We have adduced substantial evidence affirmatively, affirmatively demonstrating that long all officials who were, present, who were present in the East Zone or within the control of East Zone troops were not harmed. Like Mr. Rayner, Mr. Lysak failed to say anything about the evidence. He failed to give a single reason why the 
analysis we presented to the chamber last week was erroneous. He failed to refer to a single statement of a single witness. Mr. President, Mr. Lysak then suggested that the concentration of evidence in the southwest zone would be consistent with party center policy because Pol Pot had a close relationship to the southwest zone. It seems he would like this chamber to make two conclusions. He would like this chamber to conclude first that Tamok was close to Pol Pot and second that because Tamok was close to Pol Pot, Everything that happened in the southwest zone reflected the intent of the party center. But there is no evidence to support either claim. Neither claim has been the subject of so much as five minutes of witness testimony. Neither claim has been the subject of a single filing. Before yesterday, neither claim had been the subject of five minutes of debate before the chamber. And just last month, the co-prosecutor's position was that executions happened everywhere. Mr. President, just last week, the co-prosecutor's position was that the executions Executions happened everywhere in Cambodia. And five minutes before Mr. Lysak took the floor, the co-prosecutor's position was that executions took place everywhere. Never did they try to link events in any particular part of the country with the party center. And they did not have to because the position was that everything happened the same way everywhere. It is critical to realize that Mr. Lysak's theory would be relevant to Nguyen criminal liability only if Nguyen Chia conspired with Tamok and Rosnin, but not with Sao Pim or Ne Saram to execute Lonol soldiers. Now, could that theory be true? Could be true. Lots of things could be true. But the chamber, and that is the point, has never considered it. The co-prosecutors never, before yesterday, argued with it. Argued it. There's no evidence at all to support it. And the chamber has no basis on which to make that conclusion. Mr. President, my fourth of the six points about two portray concerns the co-prosecutor's assertion that we failed even to address the core claim about two portray. They described their core claim as being that Moon Chia participated in a joint criminal enterprise to execute class enemies and all those opposed to the CPK. In fact, we showed the chamber that at worst, the CPK categorized soldiers and officials along with other groups, such as monks and intellectuals, who were never, people who were never subject to a policy of execution. The co-prosecutor's position that the CPK viewed soldiers and officials with suspicion is insufficient as a matter of law to establish our clients the closing order alleges that at two portraits, soldiers and officials were indiscriminately murdered en masse. And it follows that only a policy that required executions of soldiers and officials en masse is of any relevance to the chamber's deliberations. Abstract class theory without a clear link to a policy of systematic execution is plainly insufficient. Mr. President, Your Honours, it is critical to recognise here that this difference between the CPK's general suspicion of rep Republican officials and its supposed decision to execute those officials summar summarily but this difference is exactly, exactly the subject of Heng Samrin's statement to Ben Kiernan. Heng Samrin does not say that Moon Chia never thought about former regime officials. He does not say that those officials were not a subject of discussion. 
What he says is that when the party center decided how to deal with Republican officials, they, quote, and I, and I quote him, did not say kill. Instead, they said, and I quote him again, don't allow them to remain in the framework, unquote. And Mr. President, this distinction cuts straight to the ambiguity at the heart of the co-prosecutor's allegation about the CPK's treatment of so-called opponents, which is that there is simply no evidence that such people were systematically executed. That brings me, Mr. President, to my fifth point about two portrait, which is that the co-prosecutor's submissions yesterday prove that they agree with us. Because while they claim their principal submission to be that soldiers were enemy of the party, they end up saying something much narrower and much simpler. They end up saying that there was a policy to kill, and I quote, officers of a certain rank and above. Now, of course, we dispute this. But the point is that the co-prosecutors know that the vague class theory Duke claims to have read in a revolutionary flag was never intended to and never did translate to execution. Even they know that they cannot credibly claim that our client intended to execute soldiers and officials regardless, regardless of rank. And as, uh, as we observed last week, the co-prosecutors failed even to assert that the alleged victims at Tu Poche were anything more than ordinary soldiers and civilians. Yesterday, they conceded that our client never intended to execute ordinary soldiers or civilians. Now, put together, these concessions established that Nguyen Chia never intended the execution of the alleged victims at Tu Poche. And this alone, Mr. President, requires the Chamber to acquit Nguyen Chia of all crimes charged in connection with Tu Poche. My, fifth, my, my sixth and final point is that the co-prosecutors co say nothing at all, nothing at all about the possibility that if any killings did take place at Tu Poche, they were constituted locally directed revenge killings. Let's not forget, Mr. President, the liberation of Pursat marked the end of a years-long bloody civil war. The alleged victims were supposedly the CPK's former opponents. Revenge killings under these circumstances are typical. Your Honor, Mr. President, my very last comment today in this trial will concern the co-prosecutor's analysis yesterday of Rusnim's role in the CPK and the role of zone leaders more generally. Now, the, the critical point, and I cannot stress this enough, is that Rosnim was not a mere, quote, zone leader. He himself was a member of the standing committee. He himself was, according to the co prosecutors, reasoning an equal participant in the standing committee's practice of democratic centralism. Now, yesterday, the co-prosecutor said that Nguyen Chia met with Roslim every three months in the Northwest Zone. And our question is, so what? What could the fact that Roslim met Nguyen Chia possibly say about the content or nature of their relationship? The co-prosecutors tell us that, is, that at one of these meetings, Nim told Nguyen Chia about the execution of Nguyen Chia's uncle, Xu Heng. Now, Mr. President, we have trouble seeing their point. Nim, not, Nim did not ask our client for permission to kill he was not, as the co-prosecutors observed, afraid to tell him he had executed Xiu Hing. They asked why would Nguyen tell Nguyen Chia about Xiu Hing and not about Tu Po Tre. And to us, Mr. President, the answer is obvious. Tu Po Tre was none of Nguyen Chia's concern. The death of his uncle quite obviously was. 
had a hard evidence of the relationship amongst the various members of the standing committee, including those who were also zone leaders, is almost completely non-existent. As we saw last week, just about the only person able to speak with any authority is Ing Sari. And he says that within Ankar, and I quote, each zone was independent. Kill as you please, do as you please. End of quote. Rosnim's flippant attitude towards Shu's Heng's execution corroborates exactly that description. The best the co-prosecutors can find in response is a small handful of telegrams reporting to show Rosnim seeking advice or guidance from the party center. They do not mention the consistent testimony that communication from the party center to the zones was limited and mainly concerned goods requested by the zones. That Nunchia almost never sent telegrams to anybody. And even this very small selection of telegrams are all in 1977 and 1978, years after two a period, Mr. President, of years in which Ben Keenan tells us the center's control over Northwest Zone forces was, and I quote, gradually increasing, end of quote. The only document they showed you during a time period remotely relevant to these charges showed only that information was conveyed to the party center without any request for advice or instructions delivered to the zone. The question is, why is every other document the co-prosecutors presented from a period so far from April 1975? To paraphrase the co-prosecutors, we must ask, was that a coincidence? Mr. President, Your Honours, there is only one hard reality about Rosnim. That reality is that he was ultimately purged. The co-prosecutors tell the chamber that he was purged, but for them, the story ends there. And for us, it is just the beginning. The co-prosecutors do not take the next step and tell you why Rosnim was purged. The answer is, Mr. President, he was considered a traitor. He was considered a traitor because he was deliberately acting contrary to party policy. He deliberately imposed harsh conditions in the Northwest Zone for the purpose of destabilizing the party center. Mr. President, your honest co-prosecutors have never adequately answered a simple question. These are my last words. If Nguyen Chia could so easily control Rosnim's behavior, why did they deem it necessary to use military force against them? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. ອ້າຍເບັດປະກາດສໍາລັບໃຫ້ຕ້ອງຈັບປີເປນນີ້ຕຶດໂຕຮອດອໍມອງ